I want to take this opportunity to uh, introduce Dr. Marcel Jikers, uh, who will be talking about extending, actually, I think Dr. White's presentation on the approaches to defining and uh, classifying uh, rehabilitation treatments and how they apply to CRT. Dr. Uh, Jikers is uh, on the faculty, he's a research professor at the Mount Sinai uh, School of Medicine in the Department of Rehabilitation Medicine where, you know, like Dr. White, he has established himself as a distinguished researcher and, and also uh, has a important sense and connection to the practice of uh, rehabilitation therapy as applied not only to traumatic brain injury but also to um, spinal cord injury. And, uh, we'll I think what we'll do after Dr. Jikers is done, we'll take a few questions. Dr. White will uh, set the stage for this afternoon. Before we do that, he'll take some questions about his approach, his uh, topic and approach to, and uh, we'll try to conclude as planned by noon so we can break for lunch. Dr. Jikers. Thank you, and good morning. Uh, if you have read the uh, agenda in your, in your book, you'll notice that uh, the title is discrepant from what's in there, and it's just because we didn't coordinate well enough. But my idea is to talk about uh, yeah, research yeah, in cognitive rehabilitation, uh, specifically yeah, from the perspective, yeah, what is the input, yeah, what are the active ingredients, how do we describe them, yeah, how uh, sufficient or insufficient yeah, is our language, and a number of related issues. So, you've all have ref heard references to the famous black box of rehabilitation. It's right behind the black hole of Calcutta. Um, yeah, we claim that we take in people with impairments uh, and activity limitations, then we do magical things to them, and it's white magic, not black magic, and they come out at the uh, other side of our facility and go home, or some would call it, are dumped back into the community, which what we believe to be improved functioning and better quality of life. And the question always is, well, exactly what happens there in the black box? Answer number one, two hours of PT, six hours of OT. It doesn't tell us anything about what's the active ingredients. We know that PTs in general do different things than OTs, but sometimes, yeah, they do very much the same thing. Yeah, just referring, yeah, to, yeah, number of hours, yeah, uh, doesn't tell you very much, and it's not a good predictor of outcomes. The research that has been done by just counting a number of hours, Dave Sifu's here, he did one, yeah, a number of years ago, you don't predict much necessarily. Answer number two, two hours of gait therapy. Now, are we getting close? It just tells you what the therapist thought she was working on, and maybe the patient thought she was working on, but it doesn't tell you anything about the therapy that was provided. Yeah, my favorite gait therapy is always eating ice cream. Yeah, it doesn't improve your gait, but as long as you believe it makes your gait better, who is worrying? So, it doesn't tell us anything about the active ingredients. Yeah, what the therapist does, what she or he uses, what yeah, she makes the patient do, etc. Um, and of course, if we don't know what the input is, how can we quantify it? Answer number three, five hours of neurodevelopmental therapy. Again, it gets us somewhat closer because it gives us an orientation as to yeah, what the therapist yeah, belief works uh, for this particular pro uh, problem the patient may be having. But if you yeah, consider how broad NDT is and how much drift there may be among pr uh, practitioners, uh, it not necessarily yeah, tell you much. So, 
Robert Allen Keith claimed, yeah, this back in yeah, uh, 97, 15 years now, lack of identification of the components of treatment has meant that we don't know which procedures in rehabilitation are essential to produce improvement, a necessary ingredient in efficiently instituting alternative treatment methods. And pretty much my claim is, yeah, uh, all these years later, 15 years later, we aren't that much further. Uh, my interest in this area, yeah, was piqued, uh, yeah, 15 yeah, uh, years ago. And uh, when we started looking at some intervention studies, and we took yeah, 171 in six U.S. rehab journals, and it didn't have to be RCTs, anything that talked about this therapy makes this particular thing better, we looked at. And we yeah, found to our dismay that if you counted or estimated the number of words that in articles were dedicated to writing up interventions, yeah, you found many, more word, uh, many fewer words than we spent on writing up outcomes. Yeah, we have all these beautiful outcome measures and we know reliability and validity and all that kind of stuff. And you find it all, but when you ask, okay, now what did they do? There wasn't that as many words and most treatment descriptions only gave number of hours, number of sessions, discipline of treatment, setting, yeah, with the actual, what happened in that session? Yeah, almost invisible. Okay, so what should we be doing? How can we classify? How can we describe yeah, what rehabilitation does? Uh, one attempt might be looking at yeah, the medical subjects headings. Yeah, PubMed, each one has discovered those uh, yeah, uh, things. And they're very useful for finding literature. But if you look at, well, specifically, yeah, what can you describe? These are some of the categories. And the ones with the double asterisks have subcategories. But this is what MASH offers you. Speech therapy and voice training. I always thought that voice training was part of speech therapy, but apparently it isn't. So, not very helpful. People have looked at the International Classification of Function, Disability and Health. Yeah. There's some very crude classification of environments and one category in there is yeah, health services and health systems. Well, rehab fits in there someplace and CRT fits in there someplace, so no use. Other people have yeah, worked it from a different way, looked at the uh, ICF impairment and activity and participation classifications and said, well, we'll look at yeah, what treatment is focused on a particular yeah, outcome and now we know what therapists do because yeah, some will say we yeah, provide gait therapy and others yeah, say we will provide cognitive rehabilitation, uh, rehabilitation therapy. So there's a paper out there by Finger that looked at interventions for all diagnostic categories by PT. There's a uh, yeah, nice set of studies out of the Netherlands, mostly by Van Langeveld, who looked at PT, OT, TR, and sports therapy for people with, disability, uh, with spinal cord injury. Um, yeah. The problem is you don't say much when you describe a treatment in terms of its targeted outcome. Um, it can be a shorthand, yeah, we use the word antidepressants and now we know if we use that word there is about 10, 15 drugs that fall into that category. We are already being yeah, fairly yeah, specific. Uh, but in the end, it doesn't tell you what the therapy is. And when you come to areas where there is not a neat, limited set of very you know, specifically uh, interventions that can be characterized in terms of what are the active molecules in here, uh, you don't say anything. Uh, and there is the whole thing that 
well, I'm yeah, complaining about yeah, using the word gay therapy, but in the end, a lot of treatments in rehab consist of yeah, having the patients go down to exactly the type of things that they have a deficit with so that they'll get better at it. Yeah, gait therapy, well, what you do is you make the patient walk. Yeah, cognitive therapy, what you do, well, you yeah, make the patient use his brain. Yeah. So, in a sense, we may need to revisit this issue that yeah, it's so bad to use the target, yeah, to uh, use John's terminology, or the object, uh, as a descriptor for the therapy. Other uh, tacts people have taken, uh, you may have heard of the practice-based evidence studies uh, being funded by NIDRR and NIH um, yeah, that yeah, uh, have looked at four separate studies, the stroke, knee hip replacement, SCI, TBI. Uh, TBI is still in the field. And what the uh, investigators there did is yeah, call from yeah, their eight or ten yeah, different sites, yeah, call a lead therapist in each of the disciplines, and yeah, put them in the same room and put them on conference calls and say, yeah, come up with a set of names for the treatments you provide, specifically those treatments that you expect to make a difference in patient outcomes. And they did that and they talked for yeah, close to a year in each instance and yeah, learned a lot as to what was being done in different places and yeah, how different names were being used for the same treatment and uh, same name for different treatments. Um, yeah. And they came up with a list of yeah, uh, what they call activities and a list of what they, came, uh, they called interventions which sometimes have subcategories, sometimes are modifiers, sometimes tell you yeah, what specifically uh, was done to the patient. Um, and these interventions can be combined with all yeah, uh, activities, uh, or at least they are relevant to some. So here's, for instance, from the TBI uh, PBE study, practice-based evidence, the PT form, and I'm, it's not the actual form, but what shows on it. Under the activities, yeah, we have pre-functional activities, therapeutic exercise, bed mobility, pre-gate, etc. Most of these things, again, don't tell you anything what was being done. It may get a little bit more informative when you look at the interventions where they could specify they use constraint uh, impaired Impaired movement ther uh, therapy, manual treadmill, task practice, uh, sensory stim, yeah. But again, vestibular rehabilitation, yeah, to me, it's closely as vague as what's in the activities. Uh, psychology had a slightly different setup, not necessarily a neat, yeah, these are activities and these are interventions. Uh, but they similarly came up with yeah, ways of classifying what they do. Look at the clinical interventions. This is their entire list I left off the assessments. They also yeah, could specify we did assessments. Well, this is fairly broad and cognitive remediation was on there. Uh, in order to yeah, specify how and what they can uh, mention the approach used, cognitive, behavioral, psychopharmacy, et cetera, and the target of intervention, anxiety, depression, et cetera. So you combine a very fake term like cognitive remediation with um, target, yeah, awareness of def deficits, and you just hope that that's what the person was working on. Uh, some other areas, uh, 
yeah, CPTs were mentioned, if you look in those as to, yeah, well, what's really useful in there, yeah, for anybody but physicians, there's not much to be found. Yeah. Uh, with, yeah, what I would presume, yeah, under one code, things that need to be separated and separate codes for things that at least superficially, yeah, are the same thing. Uh, SNOMED and other, yeah, uh, not necessarily taxonomies, but uh, terminology system, you yeah, have similar problems. Uh, nurses in this country and now international have developed a number of ways of cl yeah, describing, classifying their treatments. Um, so here are the four major yeah, systems that I think are still being developed by yeah, more than just one person. Probably most prominent is the nursing intervention classification. Yeah, which describes 542 interventions, and intervention in their terminology not necessarily means the same thing, yeah, in 30 classes, which then roll up in seven domains. Each one of those interventions is labeled, defined, and described using from one to 10, 20 specific nursing activities, which could be such things as putting the patient at ease, yeah, or putting ice on yeah, the hurting knee, things like that. Uh, these were developed largely inductively and tested yeah, with Delphi processes. So there's a recent paper that yeah, said, yeah, let's look at what do nurses agree on are interventions relevant to TBI, and those were described uh, in picking yeah, activities from the NIC. Um, and they started off with saying, well, people with TBI may have various problems. Well, let's describe those in terms of the NANDA, North American Nursing Diagnostic Association, I think, diagnostic uh, thing. So body image disturbed, you could use these activities, active listening, coping, counseling, etc. We're getting a little bit more specific. Some of these words now actually give you an idea of what might be going on. And of course, yeah, each one of those one, two, three, seven yeah, activities um, yeah, would have up to yeah, 20 yeah, interventions, which yeah, might be even more yeah, useful. Um, so here's for another yeah, nursing diagnosis, chronic confusion, yeah, again, a set of uh, yeah, interventions. Um, all in all, um, yeah, I yeah, don't think that yeah, the N uh, uh, NIC yeah, is uh, a useful system uh, to, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, used to describe rehabilitation in general, cognitive rehabilitation more specifically. Um, and I'm now getting into yeah, some of the things that uh, John White yeah, previously uh, said. Yeah, the only way to fruitfully describe rehabilitation treatment is to sp specify active ingredients, and others have said this morning, those attributes of the treatment that bring about changes in the object of treatment. Uh, there are the essential ingredients that probably will yeah, uh, be the basis for naming the treatment. And yeah, there may be other, uh, but yeah, the essential ingredients yeah, uh, yeah, engage the mechanism of action. Something starts happening either in the patient or in the patient's environment yeah, that yeah, we presume yeah, will bring about an improvement, yeah, will bring about, yeah, an uh, change in the object of treatment and then, yeah, cascading down potentially to, yeah, more distal outcomes, yeah, will bring about, yeah, changes in the targets of treatment. Um, and, 
if you are wondering why John and I have the same yeah, ideas, that's because we have for three plus years now been discussing yeah, this stuff. And yeah, I steal yeah, his slides liberally and I told him not to steal mine. Uh, we now talk about yeah, this as the tripartite structure when you yeah, describe treatments. Yeah, you have to have number one, ingredients, you have to have number two, a um, theory about how these ingredients engage a mechanism of action, and you have to have number three, how at the end of that mechanism of action there is an object yeah, that is being changed. Um, John pretty much yeah, covered the areas of treatment theory, enablement theory, um, so, yeah, I will, yeah, uh, go um, through most of this and, yeah, pick up these slides who uh, are stolen again from another of our collaborators, Tessa Hart. Um, yeah, nothing new here, uh, yeah, except, yeah, that, yeah, ingredients, what the therapist does or, yeah, selects mechanism of action, how it's supposed to work, expected to work, and the aspect of functioning directly changed the object. Um, now, not necessarily uh, yeah, uh, specified by John was that yeah, we like to yeah, use this maybe uncommon word object of treatment uh, because we want to distinguish from target, but also don't like to talk about yeah, functioning. And in most cases, yeah, the patients have issues with functioning because yeah, we don't necessarily change all of functioning. Yeah. Some uh, treatments are very good at yeah, teaching a patient a skill in the first place. And yeah, other treatments are very good at helping the patient to generalize that skill to different environments. Yeah. So by using the word object, yeah, we yeah, keep the liberty yeah, to uh, make clear that uh, yeah, not all interventions, even though they superficially yeah, uh, addressing the same area, whether that's dressing or remembering stuff, yeah, uh, not necessarily yeah, focus on the same aspect of that functioning. Um, we talked about that, uh, targets of treatment, uh, essential ingredients, uh, John covered that, active ingredients, um, this is how it probably works in practice. Yeah. A researcher may start with ingredients, but a therapist on the floor yeah, probably starts with what's the problem of my patient? Yeah. And then works back from that. Yeah. What mechanism of action might there be connected to what ingredients that I can use yeah, to make an improvement to the benefit of this patient? Uh, so this might be what we have come to call object first thinking uh, on the part of a um, therapist that yeah, we are thinking might be very useful to uh, when it comes to describing treatments um, rather than classifying them quote unquote by the ingredients, we may start classifying them by the object yeah, and then subcategories under that of um, uh, different ingredient sets. Uh, we yeah, have carried this forward, and yeah, my colleague uh, Theo Saucidis, Thau sorry, Theo, is here. Uh, I think he was one of the uh, people who led us into distinguishing four broad domains yeah, that contain mutually exclusive 
uh, objects of treatment. At least we think they are yeah, exclusive of one another. Uh, physical tissue properties, changes in the shape, size, etc. Yeah, for instance, tendon lengthening, and John already told you all the ways you're going to lengthen tendons tomorrow. Uh, organ functions, changes in the output capacity yeah, of various organs, for instance, improving cardiovascular endurance. And then the, true, the two categories that yeah, are most problematic in our minds when we think about, okay, how are you going to subdivide this? Yeah, skilled performances and cognitive effective representations. Uh, and those both are very much yeah, relevant to yeah, CRT. Uh, yeah, we want people to start to learn yeah, new things, for instance, how to use a memory book. Yeah? And we want to have them to have cognitive yeah, effective representations, uh, sometimes as simple as you have a problem with unawareness. Yeah? Um, Tessa Hart again came up with yeah, uh, this scheme to yeah, try to line up some of the yeah, basic issues uh, that yeah, differentiate yeah, between skilled performance and the cognitive effective representations. And yeah, um, one of our issues here is and yeah, I had to talk, I think about this in the previous talks this morning. Um, yeah, the complaint that compared to yeah, uh, uh, chemical treatments for cancer, yeah, CRT is yeah, so yeah, fuzzy, etc. Uh, well, because yeah, different behavioral treatments, yeah can differ from one another on so many aspects yeah, that yeah, we haven't yeah, uh, been able to come up with yeah, bright, clear lines separating them. And we're talking now about, well, maybe there are no fuzzy lines either. Maybe they all should be described in terms of continua, yeah, where we, yeah, maybe be able to say, well, Jones' treatment for memory problems is more on the implicit learning side of things, while William's treatment yeah, is more on the explicit memory side of things. Um, so, yeah, when you're listening, yeah, what uh, I'll be saying during this, the rest of this presentation, or, yeah, uh, to, yeah, other people, yes, we all agree yeah, that there should be more specificity, better ways of describing what goes on in the therapy session. Yeah. The problem is that there are about 6,450,322 variables, and we haven't been able to yeah, write them all up, let alone give good thought as to what they individually mean and what combinations of those things mean. Okay, circling back to CRT and the IOM report, uh, there, oops, sorry, there is yeah, uh, one of the definitions um, yeah, and other descriptions yeah, that uh, were in the yeah, report. Um, from my point of view, it starts with cognitive rehabilitation. Whose cognition are we talking about? The therapist or the patient? That's just a, a minor side uh, thing. Focused on the impairment itself or the activities affected by the impairment. Think back to John's distinction between treatment uh, theory and enablement theory, the object, which is proximal, and the target, which may be distal. Uh, current definitions of CRT focus on the intention, my emphasis, to improve or accommodate one or more. Yeah. Again, what I have been saying, when you say gate therapy, you don't say anything. 
Um, in the page with descriptions from, uh, or definitions that came from various organizations, this one is from the VA, and there is some nice stuff that is yeah, not just referring to the outcomes, but there's some yeah, information in here yeah, uh, that gives you a better idea yeah, what is being done in a treatment session. Um, okay, let's focus yeah, some on issues of yeah, dose. And I realize you cannot talk about dose yeah, without being able to specify active ingredients. Uh, but maybe some thinking about dose and dosage yeah, may help us to yeah, think through some of the issues of active ingredients. Um, well, you're all familiar with Cicerone studies. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was rereading his first paper and yeah, uh, with a focus on, okay, how much is there of the content of treatment? And there isn't much. Um, and so I yeah, focused on the first study in the 2005, uh, sorry, the 2000 paper went to the 2005 paper and yeah, the 2011 paper. And in all instances, certainly, yeah, if you go to Keith's papers, you don't find much about yeah, the content. Well, uh, can we blame yeah, Cicerone? And there's a reference just in case you didn't know these papers. Um, thank the Lord, there was a very recent publication yeah, by a bunch out of uh, Holland and Derek Wade, England, that yeah, looked at pretty much the same literature, but very specifically on what's the content of these treatments. And they took yeah, 95 RCTs yeah, to determine the effective elements in terms of patients and treatment characteristics, treatment goals and outcome. So they have yeah, some patient characteristics, etc. but a, ma a major yeah, component of their focus was on yeah, the content of therapy. And they conclude, or I picked it up from their uh, abstract, most studies have given little information about the actual content of the treatment, which makes it difficult to use the studies when making treatment decisions in daily clinical practice. I bet you TRICARE didn't know this yet. Yeah. Okay, what did they look for? Content. Where did they look? In the paper itself, in the references that the paper might have in an available manual, and they even took the trouble to yeah, do a MEDLINE search on the name of the primary author, see what came up, and see whether there was anything that yeah, might have described the content of the treatment. And no such luck. And what did they look for? Yeah, setting, goals, use of homework, duration, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, content more specifically, and yeah, basically what they yeah, came up with yeah, was much of the information that they were looking for was missing. Yeah. And they, when they talked about content, they were not even talking about such sophisticated quote unquote stuff as John White and I are talking about when we say active ingredients that through a mechanism of action bring about a change in an object. Yeah, they just wanted to have some description of what went on in that yeah, treatment office. Um, something that I was happy to see because it confirmed what I yeah, put in my paper uh, 12 years ago. In many studies, the outcome measures are all described in high detail, while the intervention is only described in very general terms. And yeah, they propose to developing an international checklist yeah, to make standardized description, etc. I'm not quite sure that a checklist in an 
in the absence of a taxonomy or a standardized terminology will do it. Okay, dosage. Is any dose of CRT beneficial? One five minute session with your friendly neighborhood psychologist? Is there an optimal amount or intensity? Yeah. When does CRT end and how do we decide? Uh, I for, stole this from Gary Olickney, who didn't talk about CRT. And then, yeah, our friend Paracelsus. All things are poison and nothing is without poison. Only the dose permits something not to be poisonous. Um, we haven't poisoned anybody yet with CRT, but there must be a level where, yeah, we have yeah, adverse effects. Um, okay, we get this whole idea of dosage from pharmacy, yeah, where we yeah, know that a pill or yeah, whatever the equivalent is contains yeah, per gram, yeah, 10 million or yeah, 100,000 molecules, and we know these are the active ingredients and the rest is inert, etc. cetera. Um, and we give that to our patients calibrated by body weight or another indicator of the capacity to avoid poisoning. And yeah, maybe we also calibrate it by the severity of the pathology. Headache, yeah, one aspirin, bad headache, two aspirins. Um, and yeah, your physician tells you you take this three times a day, yeah, with a glass of water. And we do that until the pathology is eliminated or forever with chronic diseases. Now, can we apply this pharmacological model to behavioral, yeah, or more specifically rehabilitation interventions? Um, I will put in a plug for yeah, CRT and Mount Sinai. Theo, wake up. Oh, he's making notes. Uh, yeah, focused on remediation executive function. Yeah, attention training, emotion regulation is major auxiliary components. A key element is yeah, what we fondly refer to as swaps, which is just an abbreviation of five keywords that we want patients to yeah, know and use. Stop, yeah, if you're running into problems in life, what's the problem? What are the alternatives for resolving it? Pick one and plan. And yeah, after you put it in to action, are you satisfied? Yeah. And patients, when they take yeah, uh, one of our yeah, treatment sessions and this far, sorry, treatment courses this far, we've done it only as a research, but very shortly it will be starting as a regular clinical program, are uh, led through this thing over and over and over again. Yeah, when they're talking about tomorrow we're gonna all have lunch together, yeah, it adds a problem that needs to be swapped. So let me yeah, presume that a swaps is an active ingredient and similar to the molecule in the physician's pill. Yeah. Um, alternatively, yeah, you can look at the swaps as yeah, something that's yeah, uh, similar to yeah, uh, providing patients with a wheelchair. First of all, you select the proper uh, wheelchair. Uh, I took a shortcut here and said right in swaps, but I should yeah, select the proper cognitive rehabilitation program. Then you supply them with a wheelchair or you supply them with a sheet with the term swaps yeah, or with a workbook. Yeah and you train them in wheelchair use or you train them in swaps use and then they apply that for life. Yeah. Uh, I put this in because in our discussions about how do we describe rehabilitation treatments, yeah, this probably is yeah, two or three different treatments. Yeah. Selecting, you may not call a treatment. Supplying is a treatment. Yeah. Training in is a treatment. Uh, let me skip that one. Okay, dosage again. Yeah, Steve Page yeah, recently published a paper yeah, where he proposed terminology for stroke motor rehabilitation 
yeah, where they addressed intensity, dosing, delivery method, and other issues, including the window. And yeah, he proposed intensity, the amount of physical or mental work put forth by the client during a particular movement or series of movements, exercise or activity. And he goes as far as to propose that there might be a measure, sorry, a measure of psychological effort yeah, to be developed that probably would very much close to Borg's yeah, exertion scale, which you probably all pretty well know. Yeah. So that would be his intensity. Um, and he talks about dosing and frequency and yeah, other stuff like that. Yeah. Um, given his proposal and yeah, some stuff I'll address in a moment, yeah, I was thinking, well, if swaps is the active ingredient in the CRT as yeah, delivered at Mount Sinai, yeah, uh, can we apply yeah, pages intensity and is it yeah, the mental effort during one swaps, yeah, or all swaps that are given during a session, and our sessions are three, four hours a day, yeah, or the entire sequence, yeah, eight weeks or 16 weeks or however long it runs, yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, one question. Um, yeah, if you read this paper, he, he talks about delivery methods and yeah, then he starts, as far as I can know, mixing stuff up with, yeah, now he's putting in there duration of elements. But let me, yeah, go to a very interesting series of papers uh, recently published in the International Journal of Speech and Language Pathology on optimal treatment intensity. And it started off by a paper by Elise uh, Baker out of Australia, I think, yeah which is what are, op what's optimal yeah, intervention intensity, yeah? And she was mostly thinking about, yeah, uh, Gary Olickney's question, yeah, how long, yeah, before we can discharge somebody, yeah? And, yeah, how frequent should sessions be? Should there be, yeah, three times a week for five weeks or five times a week for three weeks, etc. cetera? Uh, the journal invited commentaries from about 10 different areas of speech language pathology. So there were responses and critiques, yeah, voice therapy, aphasia, dysphagia, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, then at the end, uh, Baker yeah, gave a second paper that yeah, tried to show what she all learned and where the issues were for the field. I recommend this uh, because there's some very nice yeah, thinking in this. Uh, they describe dosage yeah, more traditionally, minutes, sessions, sessions, weeks, etc., and intensity as the number of repetitions of an active ingredient delivered during a treatment session, the number of swapses. And they pulled this yeah, uh, from education. Yeah, we're, uh, the number of times the teacher interacts with the student as to what's the capital of all the 50 states. Every time she asks, yeah, what's the, uh, the capital of Connecticut? And the student says, Boise, yeah, and she gives feedback, yeah, that's an entity of educational activity. So they propose to do the same. And, well, my swaps is fit in there. Um, I'm almost done. Um, so, yeah, in the final paper, Baker gives five reasons for establishing optimal intensity of an intervention is difficult, and she doesn't even get to the whole issue of, well, but exactly, yeah, what's the active ingredient, how do you measure it, how do you operationalize it, how do you quantify it, yeah. So, if she thought it was difficult yeah, to specify what's the optimal intensity, wait till they start trying. And most of our work was being funded by NIDRI, so I want to uh, give him the credit. Thank you. I'll be happy to answer questions. Thank you, Dr. Jackers.